Now the Orthodox Church said no. Only, the only conditions that we will require of the brethren are that they to be, are to be baptized, they're to attend church on a regular basis, they're to partake of what is called the sacraments. You know, when we come together for the Passover, only they called it the Lord's Supper. And so they did it every day of the week. And certain ones came and did it on the weekend. Then they also required regular fellowship. Now the first plunge of the first or the largest church of God into Babylonianism was its church administration. This is how they adopted the entire Babylonian program into their church. First of all, they began to be infiltrated by people which I will identify by name and give their background with Babylonianism. And they took over, over a ten-year period after infiltration, the entire church administration. This is the way they did it in the Presbyterian church, all the other churches. And this is why I have tried to make the Church of God Evangelistic Association an association of voluntary Christians who want to work together and not an ironclad dictatorship. So there would never be an opportunity for a church dictatorship to emerge to take us into Babylonianism. It has taken 90,000 individuals into Babylonianism. I want to turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 15. Notice a warning to one of the churches all the way back when Jesus wrote the seven, the, to the seven churches. So has you also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Jesus Christ hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. When you take this word, Nicolaitan, and break it down into Greek Strong's Concordance, it literally means a conqueror of the people. Total mind control of the people, so they cannot think for themselves in any way. And yet the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. God sets in the church ministers, apostles, prophets. The Bible says so in Ephesians 4. So there is nothing wrong with a ministry set in the church to teach. That's good. But the key is, follow me as I follow Christ and teach you and you see it with your own eyes right out of the Bible. Babylonianism... Total control of individuals has different names. It's called socialism. It's called communism. It's called collectivism. It's called Gnosticism. Humanism. Freemasonry. Occultism. All have the identical Babylonian doctrine of absolute mind control over their membership. They're all the same. There's no difference. Now, the Jews, when they went into captivity in the 5th century B.C. to the Babylonians, they began to adopt this system. They became known as Pharisees later. And the Pharisees totally controlled the Jewish people in Palestine when Jesus came on the scene. If you didn't agree with one of the rabbis, you were put out of the synagogue. They were told... Publicly, all the people don't buy or sell from that individual and they would absolutely destroy you economically and spiritually if you didn't do every little detail the way the Pharisees said. That's nothing but Babylonianism. Let's go into the Bible and see it in action in Jesus' day. John chapter 9. Jesus had done a formidable miracle. He had healed a man. And the Pharisees came to the parents. And they said, look, uh, what's going on here? This man wasn't from us. We didn't send him. Verse 22. These words spake his parents. Notice, they defended themselves. They said, look, Pharisee, you go to my son and ask him how he was healed. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say a word because I'm afraid whatever I say will be held against me. They said... These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if any man did confess that he, Jesus, was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. 
And yet Jesus just did a formidable miracle that they could not hide and could not deny. So here was a concept of total control over the people. It was forced conformity. Brethren, there has to be certain rules and regulations that we all go by so we can have a unity of mind. But that does not take away from free will from anyone. It's called church administration. A second link to Babylonianism, in addition to total control of the minds of the people, is that the people were told that they could not understand the Bible. The ordinary person could no longer understand the Bible. So you had to have a doctrinal committee who would divulge all truth to everyone else. Does that sound like the Roman Catholic Church and only the Pope can divulge truth? The same system. Babylonianism. The committee would go to scholars, worldly scholars, to find what the truth was. And this is what happened in the Worldwide Church of God in 1972 when the change came. This is a Gnostic concept. Babylonianism. All of us who have studied deeply into modern scholarship know that they say you learn truth by experience. Taste, touch, feel, sight, and so on. The five senses of the body. What does this do automatically? It eliminates revealed truth from the Bible. It's nothing but old pantheism with a new name called humanism today. Socialism, communism. Everything is physical and there is nothing revealed. In the Bible that is true. If you can't experience it with a taste, touch, sight, feel, sound, it's not true. This is exactly what Satan told Eve in the Garden of Eden. God revealed truth to her and she chose to listen to Satan that she had to experience it, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, to find out whether it was true or not. And sin or death immediately was sentenced upon her. They say you must experience to know whether it's true. All doctrinal changes in that church after this began in 1972 through 1975 were based upon this humanistic approach. Every doctrinal change. And there were many. Some of them were right. They were right on a few. But they made other changes that were not correct. A third link with the worldwide church of God and Babylonianism was that they were told by Chase Manhattan Bank that they could borrow up to $12 million on Mr. Armstrong's signature alone so they could build a house for God. And in the restrooms on the floor were Masonic symbols. Now, the loan was made by an insurance company that was an affiliate of Chase Manhattan Bank, which is one of the leaders in the world, David Rockefeller and the Rockefeller family and the Rothschilds from Europe, who are a part of the Illuminati. The Bible states very clearly that the servant is uh, the, the, uh, the borrower is servant to the lender. When one large corporation lends money to another large corporation, what happens? The lender of all of this $12 million sends and requires that a board member from the Chase Manhattan Bank or their affiliate, the insurance company, sit on the board of directors of the Worldwide Church of God to see to it the money is spent properly and they can pay back their loan. That means now a member of the Illuminati is helping to make church policy. Babylonianism. Now Chase Manhattan Bank is an international bank tied in with the world system, Kuhn Loeb Corporation, and even one of the great nephew of the original Kuhn Loeb international bankers that sent $20 million 
through Germany to overthrow Russia for communism, sat at the right hand of the son of Herbert Armstrong in case there was a split in the church over all this. His name was Robert Kuhn. These same people own large foundations like the Ford Foundation, the Crest Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. They have funded every socialistic movement in America since 1909. Chase Manhattan Bank also made a loan to help found another organization that was a part of the Worldwide Church of God. It was called the Ambassador International Cultural Foundation. I'll talk about it in just a moment and show how that brought them even further into Babylonianism. Remember, the lender always sets the policy. The lender. The borrower is at the mercy of the lender. Mobile Oil Corporation also made loans to the Worldwide Church of God. It's tied in with the seven sisters, the seven oil companies that have interlocking board of directors with Chase Manhattan Bank, worldism, globalism. The man who formulated this policy and brought the Worldwide Church of God into Babylonianism was named Stanley Rader. This man was a lawyer and general counsel for the Worldwide Church of God. He handled the bag of money. Does that remind you when Jesus was walking the earth? Who handled the bag? Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. It was stated publicly by Stanley Rader and carried in a newspaper in California that he had long been an agent of the Chase Manhattan Bank. But there was yet another link to the worldwide church of God, the Babylonianism, that we must avoid at all cost. There's a book called The Mystery of Freemasonry. This book was written in 1925 by a Catholic cardinal by the name of Rodriguez. Here's what he said all the way back in 1925. Quote, The attack of Freemasonry upon the family is most dangerous to our society. Starting with the laws of civil matrimony, depreciating matrimony in the eyes of the ignorant masses. Masonry has deprived it, that's matrimony, the married state, of its consecration and has reduced it to a human contract. End of quote. Think what I just said. The Church of the Living God throughout the centuries has always looked at matrimony, a man and his wife as a sacred institution bound together by God Almighty. And it was not to be severed, if at all possible. And yet here in the worldwide Church of God, starting back in 1974, they changed their divorce and remarriage laws within the church. They did do some things that were correct, but they added only one little hook to it. That hook was, they said that God did not bind marriages. Masonry. Freemasonry had now taken the divorce and remarriage rules within the church. While they taught certain doctrinal points correctly, they added the twist that it is simply a human relationship and it is not bound by God Almighty and sanctified and set apart by Him. They stated that it was only a civil law and the civil government is what bound you together and any time the marriage did not work out, civil government can dissolve it. That is not biblical. There are reasons for divorce and remarriage within the Bible. And when two people within the church of the living God cannot get along together, they are free to separate, but never remarry someone else. They can be reconciled to themselves. And yet they took the worldwide church of God into Babylonianism. The worldwide church of God took the advice of an attorney who was a member of the Jewish Freemasonry called B'nai Berith. His name was Stanley Rader. Stanley Rader. 